Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefski, and we are back with another episode of Back to the Primitive. This is our limited series that is dedicated to the building, painting, and designing of our studio's 3,000 point Lizardman army. And on today's episode, we are showcasing the progress we've made so far on our 3,000 point army, the Lizards of Waz, as it is known as. Now, just a quick reminder, in case you haven't, if you're unaware, the uh, Lizards of Waz army, which is a 3,000 point Lizardman army, it is a combination of both orcs and goblins as well as Lizardmen, and it's being cobbled together to make a 3,000 point Lizardman army. And the reason why is because I had all these spare bone splitter miniatures that were just kind of collecting dust, and I finally painted up the last of my bone splitters. I've also added some Saurus warriors, and then I'm going to paint up some skinks next, as well as some goblins for my skinks, and then of course, you know, have my 3,000 point army. So this is the progress that we've made so far on the army. So far, all of my Soros warriors, quote unquote, are all painted up now. So now it's time to be moving on to some skinks. And as you can see, this is a combination of both bone splitter miniatures as well as lizardman miniatures, seraphon warrior miniatures uh, for my uh, for my Soros warriors is what I'm doing. So up to this point, you guys are very familiar with these ones here. So we've done this unit before. We showcased these guys real quick. These uh, Savage Orcs with the uh, purple uh, war paint, the magenta war paint. We've also showcased these guys here with the blue war paint as well. We've also showcased our war dancer as well as our general for both of these guys as well. We've showcased those guys before. And same thing with these archers, these uh, arrow, arrow boys. We've also showcased those guys before. Now this back rank has all been fully completed. It's been done for a while now. Uh, we've actually done painting tutorials on these guys. Showed you guys how to paint these up quickly and cheaply. You've also seen them in different Age of Sigmar battle reports as well. Because back when we used to play Warhammer Age of Sigmar, that's what we were going with. I was going with a uh, bone splitter army. Uh, we stopped doing Age of Sigmar battle reports and decided to focus entirely on uh, Warhammer Fantasy battle instead. So the problem was that these miniatures weren't going anywhere doing anything. Uh, for the most part. So because I decided to use these guys as proxy Saurus warriors for my 3000 point Lizardmen army that I'm putting together for our studio. Because you know Orcs and Goblins and Lizardmen are kind of similar in the, in the sense that they have you know uh, what you call it they have um, you know big fighters and small little you know unit blockers and things of that nature so that's what we decided to do with that. Now what's been recently uh, added is this unit here of Savage Orcs. These guys have been made. Same thing with this big stabba. We've also painted up these guys here, which are unit fillers for Croxagore. We're using these guys as proxy for Croxagores. And same thing with these Savage Orcs here with the white uh, uh, war paint. This troll, and then these 16 Saurus Warriors. So these are all have been made, uh, have been done so far over this since the last time you checked in. So let's go ahead and talk about these guys real quick. Let's go and start with these guys real quick. So these guys here are Orc Savage Orcs or Savage Orcs or bone splitters, depending on how you want to look at them. Um, these guys, of course, were painted up for my army as well. Um, same kind of motif as I used for my other um, Savage Orc units. These guys have orange war paint, as you can see. They have green skin and orange war paint. They got blue cording for all the cording and the details for these guys. These guys are all armed with halberds and such. Um, this unit here, as well as this unit here, and then some of my uh, Soros Wars will make up the Temple Guard unit that's in our army. These guys will be proxying as temple guards. That's what they'll be caught proxying as. Very nice paint job there. Very quick and easy to paint for these guys. Now this big stabber here, who's the orange war paint, as well as the big stabber here, as well as these uh, 50 millimeter bases with two savage orcs on them. These guys are gonna be used as unit fillers to be used as uh, proxies for croxagores. Now in case you're unfamiliar, in the Lizardman army, Croxagores can be used as, uh, can be intermixed with units of Skinks to give them some extra fighting power. And that's exactly what I'm using these guys for as their proxies. They're going to be a proxying as Croxagores. So you can see these guys have like a purplish paint job. Makes them look a little bit different than everybody else to represent that fact as well. So they got yellow cording on their, uh, on their clothing. They also got uh, purple war paint as well. Same thing with this big stabba. As you can see, they got that as well. And then I have another unit of Savage Oryx. These guys are going to use as uh, regular Saurus Warriors as well. These Savage Oryx have been painted with uh, white. They have white war paints, as you can see on their faces and stuff. They also got green cording on their weapons and equipment as well. Another big stab I'm going to use as a Croxagore proxy. So 
these guys look really, really awesome as well. Really happy the way that these guys came out as well. And then we have this troll. Now this troll is an old, old miniature. It's from the Battle of Skull Pass, I think is what it's called. I think that's the fifth or sixth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, I believe, when that starter set came out. So this troll is an old, old miniature, but I'm using this guy as a proxy for a Croxagore. So that way it can be used for units of skinks as well. So we got done painting up these three units of orcs to round out our Saurus Warriors. And the very last edition, of course, are actual Saurus Warriors. <laughs> Um, like I said before my last video, I managed to get a bunch of Lizardman miniatures secondhand for cheap. I got them for like a quarter of their asking price, which is all kinds of awesome. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff were missing off of them, but that was okay though, because it allowed me to do some pretty creative conversion work instead. So these guys are actually my Saurus Warriors. I also got four Saurus Warriors here. As you can see here, we have one that's made with a Savage Orc body with a Saurus head. And the reason why these guys are a little bit different, the reason why I did that is because when you take those four, let me go and just grab them real quick. They can't pick, pick, pick them out of this unit real fast. So let me just grab these guys out of their unit real quick. All right, oops, I'm gonna knock that guy over. Uh, the reason why I'm having them is because when you put them together like this, what ends up happening is that uh, what they become are temple guard bearers. All right, that's the reason why. And the reason why is because I'm planning on putting a slam guy on there as well. So this is the next project I'm working on. Let me go and just pull out my little conversion I have going on here. It's right here actually. So as you can see here, I got this little conversion work going on here. Uh, this is made out of a spare uh, Basilodon. I think it's called a Shrine of Sotek, I think is what it's called. It's the one that has serpents on it. I also took a little frog miniature that I got from one of the sprues. This guy here is going to be a little slang character that we can have, which makes it really, really awesome as well. And I just took some uh, poles, some standard bears from the Lizardman Army uh, sprue. And I just made this really, really quick deck real quick out of some balsa wood and some... Uh, some uh, some, uh, some tree, tree branches and some uh, popsicle sticks. And the reason why is because then this guy goes on top like this. Let me go and set it on there real quick. It's not a perfect fit right now, but anyway, you get the idea. It's going to be uh, a slan being carried by four dudes. And that's going to be my little slan proxy that we have. That's Kermit the Slan. Uh, it's going to be my little proxy I'm going to use for that guy. It's going to look like the original uh, slan miniature from uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, the fourth edition. Oh, sorry, 5th edition, I think is what it was when those guys first came out. Um, they actually, the slang guys look like giant frogs that were carried around on a palanquin, carried by four temple guards, what they originally looked like. And that's what I'm going to do for these guys to make that miniature right there. So it's going to look really awesome. In fact, this is the next thing I'll be working on is uh, on this current the slang guy, as well as some uh, skinks and some goblins to start fleshing out my core requirements. But as you see here, we got our Saurus Warriors. These guys have that nice cyan turquoise color for them. Different colored scales, yellow, orange, purple, red. Just because, as you guys are well aware, I do like bright, bold colors in my armies. In fact, I'll be releasing a cheap shot on these guys, a high paint. These guys are really quick. So that way you guys can see exactly what that looks like. So that's the nice part. In fact, if you take one of these guys here and you put it right next to a Savage Auric, it actually looks really cool with the green and the turquoise. It's gonna look awesome. Now, the last time I was on this video, I talked about the bases, like how I was going to try to do the bases differently. Uh, if you guys remember, I showed you guys my original orcs that I, made, I painted up, that Badland base that I originally put on them. And I was originally going to, originally I was going to actually change the base on these guys. I was going to go for like this swampy kind of jungle look. The problem though with the swampy jungle look base, the way I wanted to do it, I was going to make it look like these guys were running across uh, water. So I was going to use some like uh, glass varnish on the bases and stuff and I was doing a couple of test bases. The problem was that because the orcs are green and the bases were green, it, it kind of like looked bleh, I guess you could say. There was not enough contrast in my opinion. If you guys notice in my, a lot of my Warhammer armies that we paint up for this channel, uh, the bases are a nice contrast to the miniatures that are standing up on them. And whether you guys are aware of it or not, the base work that you do on your bases actually contribute a lot to the painting of your army, for your overall theme of your army. It actually, it's one of the most predominant colors that you see in armies is the base work that you do. And unfortunately, when I did the green, it just didn't pop, it wasn't eye-catching, it just looked 
blech, I guess for lack of a better word. So I was going nuts trying to figure out what I was going to do for the base. I tried doing different jungle and sand bases, but because the orcs were primarily green, throwing a green base on it just didn't look contrasting enough. So I was kind of upset about it. But then I painted up a test model for some of my, uh, my Lizardman army, and then when I put them on the Badland base, like you see here, it had a really nice contrast. It contrasted nicely with the turquoise color of their flesh. It was a really nice, uh, what you, uh, not contrasting color, I'm sorry, complementary color, I believe is the word. Complementary, is it? I think it's complementary. Um, the complementary color of the orange with the teal looked really, really good. It looked really nice, actually. And so once I saw that and saw how that was going to work together, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep that Badland base and just add these uh, and just do the same thing for the rest of my Lizardman army. Make it look like these guys are running across some mud flats or something. Like, it, I can actually kind of see it. These guys are running along like the banks of a river in Lustria because, you know, the soil in a lot of jungle, a lot of countries that have a lot of rainforest or jungles, they usually have like kind of like a reddish kind of color for the dirt. Um, Hawaii, for example, has got that beautiful red dirt color in, in the soil, for example. You know, in, in Hawaii, as volcanic islands primarily, and they also have a lot of, you know, a lot of rainforests on the, on that, in that state. So I decided I wanted to go with that kind of look for my um, army. And that's what I decided to do instead. So as you can see, the base work for those look really, really nice with that turquoise color. It actually works out quite nicely. So that is going to be freaking amazing uh, working on that as well. So yeah, the next project I'm working on, of course, is a little slime character I have here. And that way he can be carried by his little temple guard buddies. This, uh, what's here on the table is a combination of both my normal Soros warriors, as well as Croxagor, as well as um, Temple Guard, to be used as proxies for my army. So that part's gonna be pretty awesome as well. So now that we've guys have shown you what we're working on now, the next thing we're gonna do real quick is talk about what we're working on next. So I'm gonna put this video on pause real quick and come back here in a second. All right, so now we're back. So here we go. We have a little tray here, as you can see. Here's from my painting area that I paint in. As you can see, there. This is what the this is the test base that I used uh, when I made my little Badland base there, as you can see. So I made a little Badland base and I glued a uh, a warrior to it real quick, a lizardman warrior, and I realized, okay, that looked really good. But um, so yeah, this is what I'm working on next. As you can see, we got quite a bit of miniatures still. I got a lot of goblin and skink miniatures I got to paint up. I'm going to be using these guys, uh, the goblins, as proxies for skinks. I also got a basilodon with a solar engine. I got my little uh, slam that I showed you guys earlier. I got a little troglodon over here as well that I'll be using with uh, as a proxy as well. Kind of go for like this like slithering, swimming looking thing is what I'm going for that one. But yeah. And then of course I got some Saurus Cav that I'm going to be using as well. Like I said before, I got these second hands. So I got eight Saurus Cav. And then I'm going to take uh, two of these big stabbers that are mounted on the cavalry bases and I'm going to put them in this unit to round them out to make it look like an even 10 source warriors. So I got the riders there. These guys are all primed in white paint and I just got to get through and start painting these guys up. I've got a lot of goblins and a lot of skinks to paint up as well, but they should go pretty quickly. I mean, there's a lot of them. It's just a matter of doing it is all. And then, of course, I got my dinosaurs here that I got to work on next. I also got a uh, carnosaur as well as some pterodons I got to paint up as well. But, you know, first off, the thing you, whenever you start painting an army, if you're one of those kind of guys who are like me who want, needs the army painted fully before you play it, my suggestion to you is always start off with your core choices first, uh, is what you should paint up. So, for example, all these guys here are my core choices, right? The reason why you want to start with your core choices is so that way you can start playing right off the bat is what you want to do. All right, so you can play at smaller light game levels, like 1,000 points, 2,000 points. If I really wanted to, I could actually squeeze 2,000 points out of this right here, just what I have right here. I could actually do that if I absolutely had to with uh, character choices and unit choices and stuff. And I could actually start playing 2,000 points with these guys, you know, right off the bat um, if I needed to. So that's what you should always do. You should always start off with your core choices so that way you can start playing as quickly as possible. And then, uh, so that's what I'm gonna work on next on all my skinks. And once all the skinks are done, then I'll probably work on my Saurus Cav. After the Saurus Cav are done, I'll probably work on the dinosaurs, you know, the actual, like, the Bastilodon, the Troglodon, the Carnosaur, and the Pterodons, because those guys are like, you know, your extras, you know, your little bonuses to your army. So I'll probably put a paint those very last, but these guys are next, all these little skinks. I'll have enough to have two horde formation of skinks, about 40 strong, with Croxagore. Uh, backing them up right by the time I get done with it. So it'll be all kinds of awesome when it gets done. 
So yeah, that's the next project that we are working on. It will be all these little skinks and goblins. I got my work cut out for me on those guys. All right, you guys, so there you have it. That is our update for our Back to the Primitive. This is the progress we made so far on our 3,000 point Lizardman backslash Orc and Goblin Army. So far it is coming out really nice. I really like all the bright bold colors and the differences and the different colors and stuff. It's looking really, really colorful and awesome, which a Lizardman army should be. So I'm really looking forward to see exactly how that turns out. So there you have it guys. Our progress so far on Back to the Primitive. As always, you guys, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.